Oh shit, we're recording. Well, you do. True crime, but there's sight. And I'm not here. Got myself a story off of uh, Unsolved Mysteries again. <clears throat> but of course, very interesting. And, you know, just like any other true legal immigrant I'm not a fan of illegal immigrants um had a uh, couple from South Korea that's the woman there Su Ya Kim <clears throat> um of course like anybody else comes to the United States of America to write, gain a better life. And like I say, when it's done legally and you do things legally, I'm all for it. But if you're doing it illegally, I don't, not a fan of that. Not a big fan of it. But these people came in, her and her husband, I can't remember if they got married or before or after, but um, they moved to New York City. And uh, of course, they had to move in the roughest parts of New York City. And uh, it was in 1981 that they, yeah, they were married. And they moved to the United States for years. They would work, you know, in the flea market industry until they made enough, open up two stores. One store was in Long Island and Bushwick. And in an ethically divide, diverse section of Brooklyn. Yeah, that's why I said the bad parts of New York. Which, mind you, Brooklyn, the Bronx. Yeah, I took a trip out there with the school. Oh, yeah. For my uh, graduation trip. It's 1993. <clears throat> I think I told this story before, but, you know, whatever. I'll tell it again. No big deal, because no one's gone back that far to hear it. And I know just going on a field trip, <laughs> yeah, that's right. The bus driver, he was a colored man and uh, <clears throat> literally was just about to enter the Bronx. And um, everybody was stunned. Even the teachers were stunned when the uh, bus driver pulled over, stopped the bus. <laughs> and that's right. <laughs> and uh, stood up. Now, of course, people, you know, there's always one of them cocky, arrogant punks from school that gonna run their mouths. And, uh, you know, after what the bus driver said, this kid's like, oh, man, I got cousins in the Bronx. I got this in the Bronx. It's like, yeah, shut the fuck. Shut up, stupid. I don't want to hear about your cousins. I'm like, you're, you're, you, like, yeah, right. If we ever, whatever this guy said, and if this happened, yeah, I'm sure you're going to have time to run to a payphone and call your cousin at the Bronx. Because what this bus driver said, I mean, hey, don't get me wrong. I'm the one to be straight up. Someone's come on our bus, man, do something stupid. I'll be the one to jump on them and tack them and whatever and take what comes, you know. <clears throat> but when you're going in, you know, another city, and you're from Massachusetts, you're damn well right, yeah, I'm just going to, you know, sit back and take whatever comes, because this guy stops the bus and gets up and has a little speech, and he stood up and he said in that quote, any one of you kids stick your head out the window and say something smart ass, stupid or dumb. Or even start yelling at someone 
and they stop this bus because you're being cocky. He said, I am not going to hesitate to let that person on the bus and let them do what they want to do to you. And that's it. And he sat back down. <laughs> so that means, right, you want to be cocky on this bus you want to do and you're going to the Bronx? Hell, even Brooklyn. That's right. Someone going to stop that bus. And I'm sure Ice Cube in the movie they made straight out of Compton wasn't joking when he, too, was on a bus that got stopped by a bunch of gangsters. And, um, you know, they went right on that bus with a gun, pulled it out, and some punk kid flipping them off, doing the hee-hee-hee on the window. Right, guy stopped the bus, got on the bus and said, yo, sucker. He said he threw up his gang sign and everything. And we can just imagine what we're going to go down in the Bronx or Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. I remember the wrestler, the Brooklyn Brawler. <laughs> he was pretty cool back in the day, man. I mean, he didn't win a lot of matches. He had a cocky attitude, you know, but I liked him. But yeah, these people that went from South Korea, they were very soft-spoken. You could see, even when the original guy did the interview on it. And, um, you know, <clears throat> whatever the case may be. And this woman went to step out like she always had done to go do shopping. And... You know, the husband came home from work or whatnot. She was with the kids and uh, so forth. By midnight, he knew that she shouldn't have taken that long to uh, done her shopping. So with that being said, you know, the case has, n has never been solved. And once again, I'll just put a picture up. I mean, the, she was, uh, she was found. And the guy got a call, he had to go down the coroner's office, and there she was, you know, dead. So between the time of her going to the store, and in that time of going there and coming back home, of course, something tragic happened. So I mean, pfft. To even think, right? It doesn't matter, right, if you're in a big-ass city, if you're in a mid-sized city, or you're way out there in a perfect example of Delphi, population 1,000 or 700 or 17, or whatever the case may be. And this is where I say, man, you always got to watch your back. Always. You just can't think you can walk out your door every day and be safe. <clears throat> Anybody from any nature, from any walks of life can come up to you, whether it be a strangulation, shooting, drive-by, you know, or a random sneak-up attack. Ugh, man, it's just, and, and like I always say in my videos, this stuff just keeps going on. And because, right, people can get away with it like that. People don't get caught, or when they do get caught, and all oh, insufficient evidence. That's right, people. Just walk the street, go do it again. And, and it wasn't me. <laughs> so, man, I don't like to bring that song up, but Shaggy, it wasn't me. Yeah, you got caught in the basement. You got caught in the bathroom. You got caught over here, but it wasn't me. It's like... <laughs> That song to me, boy, when he's singing about, you know, I got caught, but it wasn't me. <laughs> oh, man, it's just crazy what you can do in life and say, it wasn't me, and get away with it. Just get away with it. So, I mean, hopefully one day, and I don't know if it will ever happen, but... The killer would get caught from this, but I don't think, especially being out there in hell side of Brooklyn, New York. <clears throat> but 
but it is sad to see people just randomly want to take a walk of life, do better for their life. Everybody wants to do better, but when you can't, you do wrong. That's what sucks. Really sucks. And then you end up like this poor girl. But anyways, um, yeah, it is a tragic loss. I would hope and would like to see this woman's killer come to justice. But who knows if that is ever going to happen. This did happen long ago. I believe it might have been in the early 90s or so. I will put the description in the box if I remember to for the full story, but I mean, I did the basics of it. <clears throat> but yeah, this case was never solved. I don't even know if I did that damn case yet. After look, I don't think I did. It was on Unsolved Mysteries, but another Laotian lady or Chinese or something also got murdered and something she did solve the case. It's too bad that couldn't happen on this one. I don't think I covered that one yet. So I'm gonna have to dig that one up and go back on it. And um, do that case, cause that one was amazing. <clears throat> and that one, my fellow YouTube fans, has got to do with something that I talk about all the time. But anyways, Till that next video, be safe, take care, always beware, and as you can see, stuff like this man, is what make, makes horror stories and movies, you know, that's one thing and I'll end up with this, that I've always put myself to learn from horror movies, right? <clears throat> they might be fiction, but honestly, a lot of movies that were made that were fiction were based on non-fiction stories. So yeah, <laughs> just like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <clears throat> Who knows what you got out there with the Brooklyn Massacre guy. Could have been a serial killer back then, you know. And where this woman had a regular routine. And you get that stupid idiot stalking, searching. I mean, this is the sad end of a sad story for a poor life. So let's take a moment of silence. Beware, people, beware. Stuff like this happens to this day. Out.